morning students in today's class we are going to learn about system software as i had already told before that we are going to discuss all the different types of software as part of the dedicated uh, section so now because we have already seen the uh, in initial introduction of all these uh, parts so now we are going to deal with each of the parts separately so today's topic is system software so let's proceed with system software so we will be seeing what is a system software so as you can see over here that system software consists of these basic types that is operating system language processors and device drivers so we will see each one of them in detail so coming to system software so what is a system software any software which is capable of communicating with the hardware is known as a system software it forms an interface between us that is users and the bare hardware of your computer so any type of uh, activity which requires low level or physical level programming is termed as system software so we can see easily that system software is that type of a software which does which makes use of low level programming so that it could accept commands from the user it could accept commands and issue various system calls to execute those actions or execute those tasks or commands so among system software the very prominent one is the operating system so you are already aware of different types of operating systems that is windows linux unix dos and apart from this we have solaris mac os so these all are different types of operating systems which are commonly available and up certain other things are like certain uh, the various distributions of linux are available like uh, fedora mandrake then you have a uh, red hat nopix zenix backtrack and many other such uh, different distributions of linux are available so now what is actually an operating system operating system is like a driver for your computer just like if you want to travel to some place you make you need a driver okay that is who will be able to drive the vehicle so or if a train needs to move it needs the engine which drives the train so your operating system is like the engine or the driver for your computer it communicates with the hardware of your computer it takes your commands it interprets those commands and it issues certain it calls certain subroutines which are small programs which perform some tasks so some subroutine to carry out operations like all those things like creating a folder saving a file okay so all these things opening a file so all these things are provided by your operating system all the things which you see that is uh, all the things uh, which are needed in order to organize your files and folders and to carry out various tasks now what all are the various tasks one is file management that is managing all the files keeping a track of the processes 
that is processor management processor management generally refers to job scheduling that is scheduling of processes which process will be executed first okay managing system resources like for example your cpu time the time the execution time which is required by a process to execute on the cpu it is known as the cpu time and it is a very important uh, system resource the memory the storage devices so all these things are very important so how to manage the system resources memory basically refers to ram in our case so ram's task is to bring all the uh, to keep or house all those apps or programs which are currently to be executed and hence cpu time and memory they are two very important system resources and apart from that we have the storage devices that is your hard disks optical disks and others and some other peripheral devices also so all these devices need to be managed and this work is done by your operating system input output management managing the input and output queues that is your computer has several device queues when i say device queues you might have already seen that uh, your printer if you have a printer attached to your computer suppose this is your computer and to this we have sorry and we have various other computers also which are connected in a lan all these computers are connected to each other and one computer which is a larger one it could be your server and this is suppose connected to your printer suppose this is your printer so what will happen over here uh, this server is the one which is directly connected to the printer but all the other computers 1 2 3 these computers can also use the printer how the printer contains a device queue printer contains a device queue that means it will have a queue of all the tasks if suppose one of the tasks is sent by a print command is first sent by the system 2 so that would be the first one in this device queue next one suppose s sends a print command next say 3 sends a print command then 1 sends a print command and 3 again sends a print command so you can see that all these devices they are standing in the queue waiting to be printed so likewise each of our devices on the computer whether a speaker whether your you might have seen you create a playlist of songs there could be one song which can be played at a time so various different songs are placed in a queue so this way we have queues for your ram we have queues for your hard disk we have queues for printer we have a queue for uh, our speaker so every input output device has its own device queue so managing this device queue is also one of the tasks of your uh, operating system then error or failure detection failure management sometimes you might have seen there is a fatal error in your uh, computer and it just gives you a small message that your computer has encountered with a serious error so but that doesn't mean that your computer stops working some certain times you might also feel that your electricity goes off so electricity goes off but still your computer keeps working okay how is that possible that is because it has a proper failure management routine and a recovery routine so all these and various others are the uh, facilities or functions of your operating system coming to the next one we have
second one is language processes in language processes we have three different types that is compiler we have assembler compiler and interpreter so this we will be seeing in our next class this is the first part of operating systems we will be seeing language processors in the next class and apart from language processors we also have device drivers so we will be discussing about language processors in detail in the next lecture thank you everybody please subscribe my channel if you have not done so and if you like the video please drop a like and a comment if you want thank you